have companies that would supply billions of people. You know, in Ghana, we do poultry so yeah, at yeah. a small scale. Mm-hmm. Here, it's not, it's not practical. It's not, it's not real, right? With all the government regulation and stunning and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. So, there's a lot of things that need to be looked at that people need to have knowledge of mm. before they can actually, you know, start inspecting factories and so And then I started thinking too, like if I start selling my products, <coughs> is it going to be at the grocery, grocery store or I'm going to have to sell it online, Amazon or any, any of these mm-hmm. platforms? And working early in my career, one of the companies I worked for, we used to sell a lot in Amazon and eBay and a lot of shipping and damage. You know, once it gets out of your warehouse or your hand, mm-hmm. the people that it goes to send their product, they don't care. They just throw things around and break things. And so I started thinking, I'm like, how am I going to get this to the customer the way it's supposed to be? So I thought, I'm like, the preservative methods I was using, the packaging type I was trying to target, it wasn't going to work. To achieve a dream, you must have a genuine and strong desire, a good purpose, and good company. At Fati Capital, we know this and we believe that the time for greatness is now. With an ambitious plan to radically transform the Gambia's economic landscape, we invite you to join us as we raise a $100 million equity fund from Gambians in the diaspora through the renowned entrepreneur, a philanthropist, and millionaire investor, Mr. Almamu Fati. Mr. Fatih is the CEO of Supersonics Money Transfer, founder of Supersonics Microfinance, founder of Wise Bank, a digital bank in the UK and Europe. Mr. Almamu Fatih is also the founder of SPay and many other companies. Fatih Capital intends to invest these funds in global money transfers, e-banking and e-money, microfinance, software and mobile application development, e-commerce, real estate, telecommunication, oil and gas, agriculture, and more. Our goal is to create a minimum of 300,000 jobs in the Gambia and to raise 1,000 new Gambian millionaires within the next five years. At Fati Capital, we believe that nothing is impossible. Driven by a strong belief that within us lies the capacity to transform the Gambia into a West African paradise and the pride of Africa, we invite you to join us even as we embark on this epic and transformational journey of national development for the Gambia by Gambians. For more information on our initiatives, investment plans and opportunities, visit our website at www.fatycapital.com or reach out to us via email at info at fatycapital.com. Ladies and gentlemen, the journey has begun. Fatty Capital, let's make it happen. Another session of Beer Talk, and today we have a very special guest, and I'm very excited about this guest today. Um, it's crazy, man. Like, Domoda has gone mainstream <laughs> for the first time. It's crazy. It's crazy, man. Um, wow. Man, I know you guys are seeing the table, but we're going to come to that. But I'm going to introduce this um, gentleman here, a young Gambian who has a big aspiration. And then, um, like they say, success is when you um, take something that's normal and then make it, um, that's something that's common, and make it uncommon. 
So for me, understanding that is something that's existing already, is happening, is there. You make a tweak to it, and then make it something that people be like, "Whoa, oh, I didn't know." You know what I mean? So that's what had that's what happened here. Like we all know, you know, when you from Gambia or you from some Gambia, you know what Domada is. Even white people know what Domada. They will, they will tell you, "Hey man, do you know how to cook peanut butter soup?" That's what's called Domada. So this man has changed peanut butter soup and then take it to the next level and put it in a con just to preserve it. Preserve it. My guest today is Hamidu Jalo of Jalos. Welcome to Pietro Club. Thank you. Thank you excited so much. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm excited to have you, man. Thank you for it. It's been a long time coming. We've been planning it, but That's right. today is the day. <laughs> That's right. Today is the day. Welcome to Pietro. How you doing? Doing all right. Yeah. You're excited to be here. Thanks for the invitation. Absolutely. Yeah. If anybody gonna be here has to be here you you supposed to be here because you know you representing us crazy man like this is the first time like i've been seeing it i know many guys are doing things outside mm -hmm. but in my community here i haven't seen such and i have to celebrate it we have to celebrate you as gambians thank you you know that's why man, i've been i've been wanting to come to this show you know um and yeah uh, let's get into it um before we go further man today the stuff again <laughs> Green team, crazy. <laughs> we, oh man, are you ready? <laughs> I'm green, man. I'm, <laughs> green. I I oh. started. I think I played red and then played green, uh -huh. and the whole thing started red green. I'm like, so where do I belong? Bucks is like, okay, just be green. You know, so Bucks, he he <laughs> he doesn't like to accept defeat. He doesn't <laughs> like defeat. So today I was looking at him. You know, at the end of the game. When the, I don't know what, uh, because I left. I don't know if that was the last goal, but it was Banu, I guess. Banu scored. No, goal. I think he scored more after. Yeah, that. after that. Yeah. Man, that dude, he was he was busy. <laughs> so he doesn't want if you want to know <laughs> that was a goal. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Bex, you falling, man. You falling. <laughs> uh, it was fun. Though. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's always fun. It's, uh -huh. it's good to um, mm -hmm. get together and you know like do exercise and have fun also at the same time, you know, absolutely. It's, it's, it's really good to yeah, keep it, it going, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's going, you know, a lot of people are coming now yeah. and then, you know, I think it's, you know, like you said, you know, you should keep doing it. Yeah, and it, it's a sense of community. Yeah. Um, all right, let's get into it, you know, before starting anything, I would just like a lot of times, you know, when we are talking to our guests, we want to know a little bit of background of them, mm -hmm. you know, because Rome wasn't built one day, you know, right. so we need to celebrate your achievements to us again, because we inspire people out there. Right. That's basically, that's one of the things we do. We want to inspire anybody who is watching us, mm -hmm. especially the young ones, you know, to keep it moving. Right. So I want to start with your educational background. Um, do you have any formal education? Yeah, yes, I do. Um, uh, first, before I get into that, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm really, I watch your programs, the only interviews you had and, you know, on, on, on YouTube. And it's, uh, it's important we have, you know, programs like this going on. Absolutely. Uh, and I, 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 I commend you for that. Thank and, you. Um, you know, let's just keep it up. And it's just going to keep growing and getting better. Right, right. Uh, with regards to my background, um, <laughs> yeah, I grew up in Fajikunda actually mm -hmm. and started my schooling over there. Uh, uh, did St. Teresa's back in 2003 mm. um, when we had that real controversy thing. Oh, <laughs> you were there at the time? <laughs> we were in the middle of that it. Was crazy. It, was, it, was, it was crazy. Wow. That, was, that was during our time. And then uh, went to Gambia High. Um, yeah, I graduated from there and then. I spent time at uh, at in, in medical school at uh, UTG. Oh, I actually spent three years actually in medical school. I was gonna oh, wow. wanted to be a doctor, but uh, <laughs> that wasn't the time for me. Uh, so uh, I I changed. Um, I, I had the opportunity to travel to Malaysia to study, uh, and that's where things changed. Um, I took up. Um, a course. Uh, uh, my major was in process engineering, mm -hmm. actual chemical engineering, and then I majored process. So um, I did that. It was really nice. Um, you know, really good school. One of the um, 
it used to be University of Pertani in Malaysia, something like that. Mm -hmm. the, the, it used to be the best tropical agriculture university oh, wow. actually over there and um, yeah they, they, they changed the name after that but, but yeah i graduated from there and then went back to gambia i spent time at the utg and then teaching you know gambia high oh, wow. uh, yeah i used to actually teach my right math where i used to sit in the same class oh, wow. <laughs> I was teaching uh, for, the, for the math yeah Wow, uh, for the man, that was crazy. That was, <laughs> that yeah, I mean, I, I got back there. It was crazy though because when I got back, it was it was just needed. They didn't have, um, you know, a teacher to help at that time. Mm -hmm. I remember I actually went there accidentally just to visit my former teachers and say hi. And then once I walked in there, the principal well, is I like, can't. "You gotta come teach here, man." <laughs> so right away, I he, you know talked me into it, and then um, yeah, I, I went in to help the kids and. Uh, it, it, it was it was tough times, man. I feel for them because mm -hmm. you know I uh, science class, the best science right, class right. at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, getting to eleventh grade, grade, I mean grade eleven, mm -hmm. without a very good background and all of that. So we had to start all over from scratch. Uh, um, you know, have extra classes just to be able to cover a lot because they only had, barely had a year left to wow. do the exams. You know, so. It worked out. Actually, some of them they had B twos, and I still have some of the messages they sent because I left before they finished. Right. Um, yeah, I taught in Gambia High. I was tutoring at UTG, um, and then uh, I had the opportunity to go back to Malaysia on a Commonwealth scholarship, mm. but things got delayed. I decided to uh, to because uh, I had admission here, but honestly, mm -hmm. it, I had two admissions at Wazu and Central. Okay. I did not want to come here. Oh wow! Because I came here to visit back in 2010 for a little bit, cause mm -hmm. some friends, yeah. uh, cousins, and and friends. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I was like, know <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I really wanted to go back to Malaysia. <laughs> or oh, the other option was to go to Canada. So actually, I had a university in Canada mm -hmm. that gave me a graduate assistant position. So I was going to work there as well and and, and study. And but then I didn't get the visa for whatever reason. Wow. Uh, yeah, and um, I was kind of upset about it because I really wanted to go experience there mm -hmm. too. And then the last option, since Malaysia got delayed, I'm like, okay, I might just try to get back to the US. You are just had to come here. We got to be needing you here. <laughs> yeah. So I, I I I applied for my visa. I got it, and I I came down. Mm -hmm. But still, I was like, you know what? I, I, have, to go, still I have to go to Canada. Uh, I just needed to to get back to Canada because I had a job. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was going to pay tuition oh, for wow. the university. I was going to mm -hmm. I was going to teach, and uh, I really wanted to go. So one of actually one of my really good Arab friends here, mm -hmm. uh, shout out to Abu Haya, man. Like, is he will help me out? Masha. So it's like shout brother, you, brother. he said, you know, we're hanging out, and it's like. There's a reason why God brought you here. Mm. He said, if you want, I can drive you to the border. You can go to Canada if you want. I can help you out easy. But there's a reason you came here. Just just make up your mind. Wow. So, you know, I was thinking about it. You know, days passed. You know, I, I started classes and things just kept going. Mm -hmm. And, I'm, you know, I just gave up the whole Canada thing. And, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and, and continue it. Uh, yeah, I was in Ellensburg, um, Central Washington. Oh, Ellensburg. Yeah, wow, okay. yeah, tough times. You know, I came down in winter time. Wow. You know, not really prepared for it. Mm. You know, my mind was all over the place, um, thinking about going to Canada plus school. So, you know, I had a really good advisor to my professor. He, sat, you know, we had a couple of times we sat talked about my situation and it's like you know um i i think you're a good student you should be you should be here you know mm -hmm. so he was trying to help me out get some scholarships and stuff you know and eventually i, I stayed he stayed so <laughs> so i did my uh, my <laughs> master's in industrial engineering Marshall. and then um yeah it was actually supposed to be a two years program mm -hmm. but i did it in like nine months Wow, you know, it was once I made oh. up my mind, I'm like, I gotta get this I gotta done. Get this done. So yeah. there, were, there were quarters I did like 19 credits, mm. 21 credits. Mm. Like it was brutal, man. But the good thing was I, you know, I 
when I put my mind to something, mm-hmm. I just go for it full time, you know, hundred percent. So I was, I was just Thanks. study, study, yeah. study, and and now you know I had goals. I just wanted to get done with it so I can focus on other stuff too. Yes. So that worked out, Alhamdulillah, mm-hmm. and then I finished that. Then um, got a job in. Uh, in, uh, in, in a glass company down in Snohomish, mm-hmm. you know, started from there experience wise, and you know, that's how it, it, it grew. Since then, I've taken up a lot of certification right, right. things that I'm interested in. Mm-hmm. I have a black belt in in Lean Six Sigma and all the you know, like oh, process yeah. improvement stuff, oh, nice. um, uh, project management. Mm. Uh, recently, because I've shifted into the food industry mm-hmm. uh i'm now a processing authority in uh in low acid foods you know so kind of helping develop you know process schedules like uh, processing times for various you know foods that are categorized as low acid mm-hmm. uh in the canning industry so a, l- a lot of training in you know and certifications that i've taken mm-hmm. also in that aspect but pretty much that's uh Wow. That's, a summary in terms of that's, that's amazing. I, okay, another thing, I don't want to put you on the spot, yeah. but I understand that, like, you you might not think that way, but I think you are very versed in the Quran. How did you, how did you, because you, you mentioned all these certificates, all these universities and everything. You know, my thing is, you know, we need to, I, I'm talking to the kids, I'm talking to the right, young right, right now. Right. You know, when, you, when they see you in a certain position, mm-hmm. We should understand that it didn't happen there, yeah. you know, and we need to strive to get whatever we put our mind into. Yeah. You were juggling all these uh, careers, yeah. you know, paths and everything, but yeah. you are a local <laughs> imam. <laughs> you keep cooking and everything. I'm yeah, like, I mean, if sometimes someone... when they don't have an imam, they yeah. help. Um, I, I help out Masha as much Allah. as possible. Uh, it's impressive. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah. Mm-hmm. you know, um, yeah, growing up, obviously, we mm-hmm. had Dara and, you know, all this stuff. Yeah. And once I started high school, I think, is when I actually, you really wanted to to study the Quran mm-hmm. and, and and learn Tajweed, proper yeah. Tajweed for that matter. Should have never, you know, we, we learned, you know, the local, yeah. local Dara yeah, 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 yeah. and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I started that with, uh, at our masjid over there with... Um, with uh with one of my 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 one of those stars over there mm-hmm. and you know i did some of the you know redo redo the whole you know the horrors and the rules of tajweed and all that stuff yeah but, you know it was okay you know alhamdulillah once i had the foundation i started reading my by my own mm-hmm. and when i went to malaysia i met uh um my star Allah, I've seen amazing people. I've not seen anybody like that guy. Wow. He uh, he's he he's a linguist. He was doing his PhD in in, in linguistics, you know. And uh, normally over there, it takes up five years to to do a PhD. Right. Two and a half years, he's done. He published so many papers, uh, and he's a half. Mm-hmm. His recitation is just unbelievable. And his knowledge of Dean and all that stuff. So, so we we started. We had an association there for international students. So we started creating lessons for whoever is interested. And mm-hmm. he used to do the lessons and all that. So I started going to him to actually memorize the Quran, and you know, and and, and, wow. and revise. So he used to push me a lot, man. So oh, sure. I, I I would I would take I would read, memorize a couple of pages. Mm-hmm. I would go to him to recite. He would correct. I would go back to so every every Sunday. Every, we had a, every Sunday, mm. so I stuck to that 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 schedule for a long time. So, a couple of times, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. during exams, I, I mean, to, this is like a tradition. Yeah. They, oh, of course, man. This is this is nice. <laughs> you know, hopefully someday we can we can start selling package attire. <laughs> <laughs> hey, to be honest, like I take this to my um my workplace before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, they're like, what is this? What is, what is this? 
Some of them actually told me you need to have a coffee stand and you gotta sell this thing. It's really good. You know, Americans, one thing about them, they like to trash oh. They like to explode. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's crazy. You know, that's a good idea. No. Yeah. No, you should start that. <laughs> you should have one down here. And attack yeah. coffee stand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Believe me, it's gonna work. It, you know. mm -hmm. It's gonna work. They like to try new stuff. Yeah. 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 So, mm -hmm. it was, uh, so, so Sheikh Ibrahim, his name Ibrahim Sani. Mm -hmm. He uh, a couple of times during the exam. Sani, he's Ghanaian. Sani, oh, Sani, Sani, okay. actually, Sani, like the second. These Nigerians have this weird thing. Oh. From my understanding, you see somebody name all their kids Ibrahim, and they will start Ibrahim Lawal, Ibrahim Sani, Ibrahim Salif. Mm. So the Salif oh, you hear is like you know the third, the second, the oh, right, first. Right, right, right. Oh, <laughs> like that gotcha. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they told me, anyways. Mm. But. So if if I don't show up on a Sunday, he will call me. It's like Hamid, where are you? No, this is more important. Like Chef, I'm in the middle of, <laughs> middle of an exam. It's like no, this is more important. You need to be here. Wow. So he pushed me. Alhamdulillah, you know, within two years, I think we were, we finished. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and since then I I just tried. I I kept reading by myself and. Uh, Got interested. I wanted to know my dean, so I started um, studying at uh, IOU Islamic Egypt Islamic Online University. Mm. Oh, that's the best. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nice international open university. Yeah. Something I think like, he has something in like Yeah, they actually okay. um, mm. opened up in Gambia. I remember I met him in Malaysia in one conference back then before he went to lunch Gambia. Mm -hmm. When I told him I'm Gambian, he's like, "Oh, I need to talk to you, man." Mm. So uh, later I realized maybe that was what was interest, but he, Alhamdulillah, he launched it there. It's really helping many people. Nice. So I, I took, I, I started a degree in Islamic studies with him, with, oh, with nice. the university, and uh, yeah, I, I did, I think, up to my third year or something. You know, I got so busy. Because for me, to be honest, it was not a degree thing. It was mm. mainly knowing my dean, yeah, dean yeah, yeah, the basic absolutely. foundations and all that stuff. Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, I, I, I read by myself. Mm. I, Alhamdulillah, I, I, I'm not a scholar. I, mm. I just know the basics. Yeah, just to be able to you, <laughs> with the, those to, basics, to, you are serving us. You are serving the community, and yeah. we commend you for that. We thank mm. you for that because. Mm. We can do it together. We can do whatever you're doing because, you know, mm -hmm. we, we are Muslims, you know, um, yeah. and our deen is very important. No yeah. matter what you're doing on this chart, you should be able to consolidate, you know, with it. But I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud yeah. of all your achievements. You know, um, man, <laughs> you are one of a kind in the community. And, um, you know, it's, it's been, it's great, you know, Knowing what what you've been through, what you what you achieved, and everything, you know, just to tell people out there, you know, young people, young Gambians, young black people, young everybody, you know, if you put your mind to it, you can do it. And now, <laughs> let's turn into business. How did you? <laughs> how did you know an engineer and all that? <laughs> become a businessman, right. and, you know, a manufacturer. I know, I know you've been a while now. Yeah. And I have always known you about, and you always talk about investing, you always talk about, yep. you know, I want to do this, I want to do that. Yeah. You know, but then how did that change for you? How did everything change to say, okay, I got to take this thing serious? I mean, maybe like people, uh, Polly. <laughs> <Still like that. laughs> you guys, you guys, you know, I'm, I'm so, I, I like how you guys do things, man. Like your right. background, business is your thing. You believe yeah. in it a lot. And then yeah. I always say this, I was a, a lot of, there's few communities in our community. Mm -hmm. Those people, if you go there, you hardly see extreme poverty. Yeah. Because of why? They embark on business, like investments yeah. a long mm -hmm. time ago. So any community that embark on that is going to be hard. You're going to be struggling right here and there. But extreme yeah. poverty, you're not going to see that in that community. Mm -hmm. And I applaud you, applaud that community for that. Now tell me. How did you turn everything to say, okay, now I'm going to focus on business? I mean, honestly, like, to be honest, I grew up in a business-oriented family. Mm -hmm. My dad had a shop, um, grocery store. I mean, my mom, she used to um, sell in the market. I actually used to go help her out. 
Uh, I, I swallow all kinds of stuff from charcoal to spices. Uh, <laughs> you know those small plastics. Well, you just put the black, you know, like black pepper or like yeah, salt, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 time, peanut butter, like yeah, all yeah. that. I, I swallow everything. You know, it happened my mom, mm-hmm. happened my dad. Um, you know, my dad is the kind of people that, that you know, like old school. Right. They just like you throw people in the water and figure it out. That's it. You know, so <laughs> I love that. Guy. There's been uh, yeah. you don't know how to swim. You drown. You so drown. It's your problem. You know. <laughs> so, but actually, yeah, from a young age, um, he actually used to let me run the shops and mm. the store sometimes uh, when he travels, and uh, he kind of taught me a sense of being responsible. Mm-hmm. And uh, and uh, you know taught taught me business. So mm-hmm. but going to school when I finished, you know I started working for the companies. I look at it. I'm like at the end of the day, that's what it is. Whatever field you are in, mm-hmm. whether it's a product you're making or it's a service you're providing, it's to sell it to somebody and mm-hmm. generate income. income. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's, yep. that's, that's, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. So when I finished my uh, studies, actually throughout my studies, you know, I used to decide businesses just to take care of my, my needs mm-hmm. financially. Um, uh, you know, but in Malaysia, in Gambia, and here too, when I was going to school, when I finished, I started working for people. Mm-hmm. actually used to design products for people. I've mm-hmm. done it with uh, water filtration systems, lighting, um, the lighting industry, LED lights, mm-hmm. and all, you know, we were, you were talking about accent lighting and right, all that right, stuff. Right. I, oh, I wow. did all of that things. So oh, I, I, I used to design products. There are places that I worked, I designed products and they owned the products. Some of them, when I used to be a product manager, I had a couple of products that, I, that we brought in and they sell out in the first month. And... I thought about it. I'm like, at the end of the day, I'm just getting paid my salary. I don't, I don't own any products that uh-huh. you get from it. No ownership of anything, you know. And unfortunately, some well, not unfortunately, but some of the bosses I worked with, mm-hmm. you know, it's not like a matter of competition or anything like that. But you know, like. They took the risk to invest and grow business at that point. But my whole point is, like, education-wise, you know, you find yourself more educated. Mm -hmm. And you start thinking to yourself, like, what's the point? If I'm going to go get all this master's, PhD, and then come work for somebody who just had a GED or maybe a high school diploma, and they're the boss, and you make products, they own the products, you get paid a salary, go home. Mm. I mean, like, you know, I started thinking along those lines, and I started. You know, I I, I felt like I I need to develop my own stuff too. Mm. You know, I honestly, anywhere I work, I work with sincerity. I don't cheat people. Mm-hmm. I don't whatever I design. If I'm given a project, I do it wholeheartedly, finish, mm-hmm. deliver it on time or before the due dates and all of that stuff. Go above and beyond, okay. I and all of that. But I figured, you know, I I need to start working on on products for my own self, right? Mm-hmm. So, so I, so I can get into business, you know, um, then I, I, I started doing a few things and, um, you know, not, not specifically food related, mm-hmm. but, you know, designing other things I've done, water bottles that I infused the water bottles that I designed and had them, I had tons of them here, started yeah. selling those things, uh, started providing certain services because I had a lot of knowledge and, background in uh, in the construction mm-hmm. industry too designing plants and buildings and and uh, you know generally remodeling stuff mm. uh, and I started doing those things too on the side where I designed plants for people get permits from the city and give it to them to give the contractors to build they started having problems with that then I started jumped in and started doing buildings myself. Mm-hmm you know, remodeling and all of that thing. So it kind of, I started seeing that the revenue, the money I get out of those things is nowhere even close to what I do for a regular job. I'm like, you know what? I I think I need to switch. Uh, switch. I, you know, as much as I love to work as an engineer, mm-hmm. all the privileges or all the, you know, like 
all the things that come with it right, some right. of the big companies right, for that right. matter um i figured you know i i, I just want to start, my, start own my own thing wow. so um i left uh the last company i worked for was amazon mm -hmm. so I, I left amazon at that point i was i made up my mind whatever it is any business as long as it's halal I don't know. I mean it. <laughs> you know, it yeah. doesn't have to be anything fancy or anything, right. whatever business it is. Yeah. So, you know, and I, I started doing a lot of studies. I did not, one thing I decided was I wasn't going to do business like we did business back home, mm. the way we are taught, small scale. Small scale, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, traditional, you know, one man, mm -hmm. um, um, uh, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I, because when I studied, I studied a lot of economics too, and you know, business management oh. for that matter. So, oh, really? wow. so all those things helped me. Mm -hmm. I was able to design my own, you know, plans, business plans, and and you know, put my ideas on paper, all the things that I want to do, and then I started putting goals, achievable goals. That's one thing about me. I, the theory, I don't do theoretical stuff. Mm -hmm. It has to be implementable. You have to have clear goals that are achievable for that matter and, and work towards it. And when I set my direction in one way, I don't look left or right, I just go. Because I know, you know, I, 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 I going in the in business background as well, back home with mm -hmm. my parents and stuff, mm -hmm. I learned to take risk as well. You know, so if it's a risk that is worth taking, I just go for it. So that's how it all happened, and then I, I started doing contract work with some of the companies around, mm -hmm. um, until I, I thought about there was a day actually I think, um, you know we were home, you know my wife cooked, gave to our neighbors and stuff, and then I met my neighbor outside and we we're talking about it, and it's like man, you guys food is always good, even just the smell, the smell, okay. yeah, you know and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. So I started yeah. thinking, you know what I think. I think this is the this is the niche. This is the, yeah. the where I want to go. Wow! You know, I I slowed down on you know the other side things I was doing. The other things I was doing mm -hmm. uh, at that point of that's before I quit my 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 job like mm -hmm. working nine to five thing. Mm -hmm. So I started doing a lot of research. I did process engineering as a sc at school. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of things. I did made like sunscreens and you know chocolate tempering and ice cream making and all that stuff wow nothing on this line in terms of pre preservation and stuff so i started working on that just research reading a lot started buying a bunch of different you know preservatives mm -hmm. at, online and testing at home so i started testing back in 2018 2019 and uh, i was getting results but not the results i wanted mm. So, and then I started thinking too, like if I start selling my products, <coughs> is it going to be at the grocery, grocery store or I'm going to have to sell it online, Amazon or any, any of these mm -hmm. platforms? And working early in my career, one of the companies I worked for, we used to sell a lot in Amazon and eBay and a lot of shipping and damage. You know, once it gets out of your warehouse or your hand, mm -hmm. the people that it goes to start their product, they don't care, they just throw things around and break things. And so I started thinking, I'm like, how am I going to get this to the customer the way it's supposed to be? So I thought, I'm like, the preservative methods I was using, the packaging type I was trying to target, it wasn't going to work. So I started developing interest in, 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 in canning. But before we get there, you know, yeah. Can <laughs> how did you, okay, when you say Domoda, Benetton, whatever, right. or you talk about dishes, like you said, uh, you mentioned that your neighbors, when you, f you give food to your neighbor, they always compliment the food. Yeah. But most of us, we would be like, okay, this is the niche. I'm going to start a restaurant. Mm -hmm. But you said, I'm yeah. going to put Domoda <laughs> in a can. Right. Bro? <laughs> <laughs> that was my <laughs> eager Yeah, that was all part of the business thing. I mean, like I said, I didn't want to do anything in the traditional way. Mm hmm I didn't want to do like the one man shoulder thing. Shoulder, uh, I mean, one man shoulder. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I didn't want to do, you know, like the restaurant thing is easy straightforward, yeah. right? 
So for me, if I start, if I open one, it's I'm just serving people within a small radius, you, yeah, you yeah, know, community yeah. and stuff. I didn't want to do all of that, so I I I chose to go in the processing or in the manufacturing side of it, which I have a lot of experience in too. Mm. Designing, I've designed uh, one of the, one of the big designs I did was for a, what we call metal ester sulfonate. It's like an intermediary product we use for making detergent soap and all kinds of detergent. Mm. So like a, a factory that will produce about 70,000 tons a year, designing from scratch, you know, all the way equipment wise and all the stuff. So I had some of that background in design and actually implementing some of these things. So that's why I wanted to go that route wow. and uh, be able to reach everybody. Mm. In the globe, not just here. We can ship to anybody from 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 America to Asia to Europe to Africa, everywhere. That's the goal. Wow. So I like that. So so mm. yeah. Uh, mm. Once I developed interest in canning, lo and behold, I I uh, you know I felt like Alhamdulillah, you know Allah helped sure. me a lot. Mm. I was there. I um, I had a, uh, the company I was working for at that time. You know, they wanted to downscale a little bit, so the little bunch of people. Mm -hmm. I was one of people in their higher pay <laughs> scale and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It was a small company. It made sense. Right. The guy wanted to, you know, to scale right. down a Absolutely. little bit. So, mm -hmm. so we had an agreement that you know, I'll just, I'll just leave. Mm -hmm. You know, because I at that point I, I was eyeing something else too. Right. So right. within that time, another company reached out to me that does, a uh, canned salmon. Mm -hmm. Or salmon. So I was already working on my product, and then this happened. I felt like God is telling me go here. Come on now. So I just took it. Was it was a crazy job? Like yeah. I had to go to Alaska. We had, <laughs> we had plans Alaska. in Alaska, yeah. where it's like in middle of nowhere. nowhere. You mm. can actually get. You can only get there with like this single engine planes right, right, or right. helicopters, right, right. those kind of stuff. Crazy. So it was crazy. So I just like yeah. I I'm looking at what I want to do. So. I just gotta go. Get to me. I wasn't working on the plant, the floor itself. As a process improvement guy, I was mainly to study that process and and improve it for them and mm -hmm. show them where we are losing money and where we're losing, you know, we're not actually been 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 efficient. Yeah, yeah. So optimizing stuff basically. Optimizing, yeah, yeah. So I did that, <laughs> and uh, that helped uh, speed up, accelerate my mm. whole thing. So knew a lot of the the um, you know. A lot of the uh, the uh, the science behind it mm -hmm. and all the regulations. Actually, the science wasn't a big deal. That's it's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. The regulatory part of it is the crazy part of it. So knowing that, studying, and mm -hmm. all that. So so once I left, I I continued working at that time. But then it helped me start focusing. And making my mind on this is the path, this is the kind of product I want to do. Because I had the option to do glass jars and mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. I chose, I can ship this to anybody, I'm not worried about it breaking on the mm -hmm. road and that kind of stuff. So, I made up my mind with that, mm -hmm. then started my proper experimentation at home. Mm -hmm. Did it for about two years, testing. I still have samples in my house that I had since 2019, 2020-ish, beginning. They're still perfectly fine. I had some, some some of these cans are from maybe last year, September. Mm -hmm. That's when we properly started uh, our thing. And uh, you open the can, it's like you just cooked it today. Cooked it today, so, yeah. It's, <laughs> a lot of people, the Canadian people are talking about it. Yeah. It's, so, it's so sweet. It's so nice. Come on, guys. Look at this. <laughs> Don't <want that> mafia. <laughs> you know? Wow. It's crazy. And it's halal, too. Yeah. You know, yeah. For, yeah. for anybody who cares about, yeah. you know, your food to be halal, this is halal. Look at the package. Everything is like, yeah. man, like, yeah. ooh, <laughs> this is crazy, bro. And yeah. it's not only Domoda. I think you have other yeah. things. Yeah, that's the chew. Oh, that's the chew. That's one of the new ones. Wow, oh, it's true, did you? Yeah, oh, so, oh, so really? like I said, I don't like doing things may, like do everybody does it, right. like maybe uh, traditionally. Mm -hmm. So I know there's beef stew out in the stores. Right. People sell beef stew. It's, uh, if you really had canned food, that's why <laughs> the best people to tell you how good your product is or how bad they, they are, like our product specifically, are the people that actually eat canned food. Eat canned food, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Eat canned food, uh, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah
when I used to travel a lot, I used to buy some of these things. I mm-hmm. know how how deficient I would say they are in so many aspects. You know, so I figured I don't want to do the same canned food be, uh, beef stew they do, mm-hmm. but there's something here that nobody has. We have we cook it with palm oil, mm-hmm. but there's nothing in the in 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 the store in the in the mainstream in the mm. industry. No, nobody does. Beef. Mm-hmm. We are the only people that do beef stew with palm oil, and palm oil has a lot of benefits. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah, all the antioxidants. It's one of the mm-hmm. best antioxidants that uh, um, you know they added to a lot of things that, mm-hmm. that, that are very useful. So right. so we decided I decided to uh, you know to uh, to have that. Wow. Uh, it worked out really good. People love it. Um, what, what is that? That chicken breast? So that's just chunks? Chunks of Yeah, it's plain okay. chicken ready to go. Just yeah. a little bit of salt. Okay. Uh, you can use it for salads, so your sandwiches, mm-hmm. chicken sandwich. Mm-hmm. Uh, your, all, the, all the like bacon recipes at home from right. pizza to all this stuff. Uh, so the, the reason why we did that one too, um, there is chicken chunks outside. Right. But there's no halal one that I know of. Mm-hmm. I started doing my homework. Smart. Went down to a lot of the a lot of Mediterranean stores. Many mm-hmm. people ask them about it. Like, you know, we don't have this. You know, there's, there's few companies that do chicken chunks, mm-hmm. plain chicken, chicken breast. Uh, some use chicken, you know, the rib and all that stuff. And but it's, there's no halal. So I'm like, yeah, we're gonna do the halal one. So our halal actually is real halal. Actually, you, you anybody can you know like anybody can make a product and mm-hmm. just put a sticker on yeah, it. And say, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very common. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. People go buy stuff, they don't yeah. ask for proof. Yeah. You know, I to be honest, I went to one of the biggest I don't want to say the name, but mm-hmm. one of the biggest stores, chain stores, wholesale stores that supply many restaurant owners buy from them, um family people. Yeah. Mm. So I took up a product one of the meats and it says halal on it. I said to the manager, I, I asked the, the the cashier, I'm like, can I talk to a manager or something? It's like, yeah, he pointed me to somebody. I spoke to the guy. I'm like, do you guys have the certification for this? Mm. Like it says halal, it has a sticker on it. Mm-hmm. Do you have, I don't see any reference number. I don't see anything. Like, do you have any thing? It's like, it's the first time ever anybody asked me for this. We don't have it. I can go back to corporate and ask for it, and hopefully they can send it to me. And most of the certifications, hmm. they expire every year, so you have to renew it. And when you renew, it's not just paying somebody to say your product is halal. They come in and inspect all your processes, not just the slaughter, slaughtering process, but even the cleaning agents that you use, whether they, they have alcohol in them and all. There's a lot. It's like it's a really huge industry, actually. Mm. It's really strict, too. So who, do, who does the... So our, does our, our, certi- our certification is from uh, the American Halal Foundation. Okay. So there's a couple of companies around. Um, there's Iswa, there's uh, Ifanka, if there's a couple of them. They get accreditation. Mm. Many of them get it from the from Jakim, Malaysian, Islamic... Mm. Supreme Islamic so, okay. Council or maybe okay. Indonesian, uh, Australian is a big thing in Australia. Mm. Uh, many of the American companies are giving different. You'd be surprised. It is the, some of these companies based here that go to Saudi Arabia or some mm. other places to actually certify products because wow. some of these places don't even have accredited bodies that will certify to go and study the products, study the processes, verify that they are Sharia compliant. Mm-hmm. And say yes, we sign off of it, and it is halal. Wow! So ours, it, it, it takes a lot of time for yeah. them to do the the come in and do your, their auditing, mm-hmm. observe your processes, mm-hmm. uh, and certify. And it's very expensive too. It's like every year yeah. you have to pay wow. because they have to travel, they have to come and check the certification and maintenance, all that stuff. Wow. So when we whatever we put on our labels. It's actually because yeah, right. yeah. there's a whole process for the USDA. Mm-hmm. I can once I started my products. That's mm-hmm. why right, it took us a couple of months before we get the certification. I'll label in the approval. They can do that in house. The USDA folks, we can talk about it because they they always in my plant. They have mm-hmm. an office there. They would they look at all the once it meets the code, the certi- the, the the USDA requirements for, for labels. Mm-hmm. They review everything. They'll sign off of it. But the moment we claim some of these things like halal. 
Yeah. They can't. So they have to. They have they, their office in DC that we have to submit all the paperwork, all the evidences, all the stuff, mm. and then they do their 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 findings, and then they sign off of it. Then oh. they're like, yeah, you can start putting it on your account. It takes a lot. So it's a lot. Of, yeah. <laughs> so for, for someone to do that, but, you have but, to be really determined. Yeah. It but is, that's so, God's work too. Yeah. So you know, yeah, making exactly. halal food. Yeah. <laughs> and, at, at, and and it's very important <laughs> for us as yeah. Muslims. So yeah. making it available for the community, for the Muslim yep. community, for everybody, I think, you know, that's God's work. Yep. Yeah, I mean, a lot of worthy for that, I for mean, going I through mean, all I of mean, that, you know, to I make mean, sure that I mean. you are certified. It's, uh, it's mm. It actually costs us more to produce a can mm. that is halal than a can that is not. Absolutely, I could tell. So, I could tell. Like, it's, it's actually huge mm -hmm. because even the our suppliers meet meet products we can go to a non-halal supplier guy mm -hmm. and buy it for 25 percent yeah. less yeah. than the mm -hmm. one selling it halal uh, some yeah. people will be like oh muslim like why are you selling it much huh? it's not it's, it, there's a there's this perception especially mm -hmm. among us mm -hmm. back, back home for example mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. We can take our kids to that, to school and be willing to pay whatever they charge for tuition. Yeah, yeah. If you take them to Dara, they, if they start to pay this, they're like, why are you charging me? Why are you charging me? So, so right, they think yeah. it's supposed to be free, free. right? So not knowing the halal so supplier guy. That's why I pay things too. Yeah. No, not, not just the deal. Like yeah. for the meat product, they mm -hmm. have to pay for certification. They have to pay for that extra cost they're incurring and making sure that they're compliant in that also con mm. continuously. So it's expensive. So we, it costs us more. Mm. It costs us, you know, additionally every year we have to pay for inspections, for audits, for mm. all this kind of stuff, which is no joke. Wow. Uh, so it's actually cheaper. We are producing our cans at without the halal part of it. Mm. We would have sold our cans, I would say, at least 25% less wow. than what it is right now. But to have cater for the Muslim, Muslim community, community yeah. and for us also Inshallah. it's our goal to like like they say kill the, the bird we two birds with yeah. one, you know one stone one that's, stones, yeah. that's the goal anyway it's amazing but, to be honest I will, <laughs> <laughs> I'm guilty for that too like I, I used to think like that I used to be like man this halal stores man this would make it easy for us so we can be able to buy halal but right. it's expensive but knowing yeah. what I know today like yeah, yeah. it's a lack of the yeah. education sensitization yeah. part Sensitive, of it yeah, yeah. you know yeah. and, and they, they, because they have to abide it's a chain mm -hmm. the company have to abide by the accrediting com mm -hmm. uh, the governments if they get the accreditation from Indonesia for example mm -hmm. like for example the company that sells fires when they were in the process of planning to come audit us mm -hmm. they were also been audited at that time mm -hmm. by this Indonesian government uh, Islamic Council, Supreme Islamic Council. Right. Not only if they have the the, the right mm -hmm. people as the inspectors that have the Islamic knowledge and all, because these things are, it's not like any tradition, like, these are modern stuff. No, but, like, how do I explain it? Uh, you know, these are contemporarily new stuff, but not every scholar would just come outright and start telling you yes or no. Mm. Like the slaughter processes, for example, you have companies that would supply billions of people. You know, in Ghana, we do poultry stuff right, at right. a small scale. Mm. Here, it's not, it's not practical. It's not, it's not real, right? With all the government regulations and stunning and all that kind of mm. stuff. Mm. So, there's a lot of things that need to be looked at that people need to have knowledge of mm. before they can actually you know, start inspecting factories and stuff. So they'll come in and inspect those organizations, look at their documentation process, look at the staff they have and their qualifications, mm. look at a whole lot of things. And they're responsible for paying their, their fares to travel, their lodging, their feeding, their, a whole lot of things. They mm. have a lot of cost. Wow. And those are not the one-day thing. Those are like, some of those audits can take weeks. Weeks. Wow. You know, it, it's expensive. Wow. That's really expensive. Mean, like, yeah. You know, they, we thank God we mm. have people, somebody else who's doing our work for us mm. of verifying oh. if something we are eating mm -hmm. is actually halal. halal so Allah, we should be thankful. Allah, 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 Allah. You know, they are Allah. leaving other jobs they could have done. Mm. They have families to take care of and, and things to do. Mm -hmm. They are leaving that to take up this role to be the police for the community. Mm. You know, 
and make sure that those that are claiming to be feeding the community certain things right. that they're actually what they are so it's it's a job it's wow they have staff they pay they have all kinds so it's not supposed to be free it's <laughs> just the, the education part of it that's why it's you good know. to have a conversation <laughs> now my whole mindset has changed <laughs> when it comes to that right because i used to complain about it too but yeah. you know yeah. you know that's why that's why we need to support we need to support uh you know our local yeah. especially you know um those in this kind of businesses areas right, you know right. wow so y- you told me like um you supply some of the local stores here like yeah. the african stores and mm-hmm. some Mediterranean stores mm-hmm. but where is your biggest uh, market As our biggest point? market right now actually is new york new uh, york city the fact that we have wow. uh, yeah we have a lot of the african we have mm-hmm. a strategy mm-hmm. our goal like i said is to make our products mainstream mm-hmm conventional like yeah. you walk into the grocery main stores yeah, like Walmart, and and yeah we're actually yeah. working in that direction we have a couple sure. of them that we are working with right now hopefully yeah. very soon we sure. can. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully very soon but yeah. there is a lot of anytime you sell food in this country mm-hmm. to not just your 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 small com- your community locally mm-hmm. even your community locally i give tell you this yeah anytime you're gonna sell a product not just cook and sell like a restaurant, mm-hmm. but a product that has more than two percent meat in it. Mm-hmm. It's no more out. It's completely out of the jurisdiction of uh, of the your 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 your, your county mm-hmm. and district. Mm-hmm. It's out of the state, like in Washington State Department of Agriculture, it's out of their hands. Yeah. It goes straight, not the FDA even, mm. it's the USDA. USDA. Oh extremely strict about right, stuff right. the requirement the regulations just by reading of them you just literally give up hmm. because for us for example the entire district here of the usda from colorado coming down um many states why well, i mean like i probably seven i don't know how many states we are probably the one or one of very few companies that are certified to produce these uh canned foods that have meat in it Wow. There's a reason for it. You'll go, to, mm. you'll go to, um, for example, I walked into the African stores, you would not see any. I've done it from New York to here to many states. Just walking on the shelves and looking at it, looking at the product. Not a single canned product that has meat in it. Because to get the approval, to get mm. the certification is almost yes. impossible mm. for many people. Like, you really have to know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. You have to do and present a lot of scientific data and testing and stuff from, from like, oh, uh, it's, 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 it's great. It took us two years. Two years? Two years. With testings wow. and all the kind of stuff. Like, they don't joke about because you are selling this to millions of people. Millions of people. Like, Wow. And it's self-stable. It's not put in the refrigerator or anything mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's potential for disaster, you know, Absolutely. if it's not done right. Absolutely. So they are very strict about it because mm-hmm. it has caused a lot of problems back a back long around. time ago. Mm-hmm. So they are very strict about it. So anyways, like, uh, what was I talking about? I'm almost tired about it. Yeah, but, it's all good. But, but like yeah. our biggest market, yeah, yeah. we started with, because yeah. our main thing was Africans already know mm-hmm. Mainly West Africans, they know Domada. Yeah, yeah. So it's easy. The marketing side of it is easy for us. We just go and supply the stores, mm-hmm. and there's a huge market in New York, to be honest, and a lot of African stores and the East Coast and our communities. Yeah, so we started with those, so we can keep getting building popularity for the brand and the product mm-hmm. while we work with these stores. So these stores will require all the certifications from our grant of inspection from the USDA to the halal certifications mm-hmm. we're claiming, uh, anything we will claim. So, you know, we have to go through a process to get approved as a certified vendor for any of these stores. And once we get to that point and oh, then... Too- <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm thinking you just grabbing it. Hey, I and, got stuff for you. Go and it's expensive. Wow. But look, Walmart, for example, don't want to be liable for anybody, anything they sell on their yeah, shelves. Yeah, yeah. Somebody yeah. eating and going after them. So they're going to push all that liability onto you, the supplier. Mm. They don't want nobody coming after that. Absolutely. Like, mm-hmm. which is understood, right? Yeah, I'm, well, yeah. Uh, mm. And 
But it used to be easy. You can meet, like, I go to a local Walmart store, you know, the manager, for example, you mm-hmm. chat, give him my product to try. They're like, oh, my God. Never had anything this good. Mm. Right? Can I get into your store? No, you have to go through corporate. There are four departments that I just respond. That's all they do. That's their job. So you have to provide your... Oh, uh, it's... It's a lot. lot. It's a lot. So... Doesn't matter how big or small your scale is, it's still this process. You have mm. to go through it once you get approved, once you are in, that's it. You're good. I mean, generally. So Gosh. it's a process. Yeah. <laughs> we have a couple of stores we are targeting, mm-hmm. the big stores, mm-hmm. and hopefully, inshallah, very soon. Wow. You know, amazing, uh, amazing, amazing, amazing. <laughs> I was going to ask you your challenges, but you answered all of those are challenges, man. Those are those part are, of it. Those I mean, are part of the challenges. Those are the challenges yeah, now. Yeah. Your challenges at the beginning, mm-hmm. getting started, even mm-hmm. getting permits, you know, building the factory itself. Because, yeah, yeah. you know, it's one thing developing the product, testing it, getting the things right, making mm-hmm. sure, yeah, it's going to work. Now, the next thing is, how do you actually from testing in your home or mm-hmm. in your lab, mm-hmm. how do you actually make this an actual product and commercialize it? That's a whole different thing. And, you know, equipment involved, like, for us, for me, to be honest with you, like, I don't even know how we got here. It's the determination. all the challenges yeah. that came, mm-hmm. in the midst of COVID, yeah. you know, like, everybody shutting down, like, oh, we got, it's it's fun to talk about it now. Yeah, no, nah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we are like finding the place. You know, uh, we we had to build our own factory because like there's no place you can go and make this product. Uh, they will never allow you to make a product from your kitchen uh, and kitchen, sell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even yeah. locally, it's uh-huh. not allowed. Uh-huh. Much more like wow. you know, you can do it in a restaurant, uh-huh. a commercial kitchen, it's probably impossible. So those are the obstacles we saw. Like now, you have to go make your own factory. Okay. I don't have the money to do it. You can't build a factory with $200,000, $500,000. Mm-hmm. No. So I'm like, oh, God, you're going to help me. Mm-hmm. I, you know, pray and keep going. So first find a place, find a place, midst of COVID. Luckily, you know, um, things eased up on the, on, the, on the leasing side of things, you know, landlords were losing business and they wanting people to come in so they can generate something. So they relaxed some of the rules, mm-hmm. laws, and so, so we got this big empty box warehouse and now where do you begin to get it to a point where they will allow you to manufacture food here. So luckily for me, with all my background in design and in, in actually doing stuff construction-wise, Alhamdulillah, Allah helped us a lot. Design the floor drains, for example, it's supposed to be commercial. I have a lot of design experience. I used to design houses. I designed a lot of things. Mm. The city said, nope, you can design it. You have to have a certified engineer do it. I called up to the, the, the engineer that designed the building. Actually, they gave me his contacts. I called him. I'm like, they sent me to you. Uh, I can't remodel my unit unless... You have to design all the things you want to do and submit. So I have to tell them all the things I want to do, right? Mm. But I said, look, I know all the software you use. I've used them. Right. I've done this for other people and stuff. Can I design mm. what I need, what I want to do? Because it's easier than me explaining it to you. Yeah. He doesn't have a clue of what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. And send it to you. Look at it. Go through all the things. Make sure it goes. It's per code, mm-hmm. it's fine, then sign off of it mm. and submit. Because he was charging me, he was going to charge me <laughs> just for the design, I think it was about I can't remember, 150 per hour or 250 dollars per hour, mm. okay? And, you know, obviously, even if it takes like two hours to design a thing, they'll quote you for oh. 50 hours, oh, right? Sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I understand, you know, so so yeah, I, I designed, it took me a couple of days, I did, but I designed everything, not just the 2D, the 3Ds and all this stuff, mm. but all this, because I know the stuff that I was doing, yeah, so I yeah. sent it to him, it's like, man, this is, can't be better than this. So it's out of a bit, charged me a little bit, compared to what he was yeah, going to charge yeah, me, yeah. and then it submitted, got the permits, the next thing is now implementing it. I had to deal with an uh, old handyman that mm-hmm. was supposed to come and do the plumbing side of it. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to get into it, but the guy 
um, didn't do what it was supposed to do, so didn't work out, so I had to go do it myself. The whole plumbing network, floor drains and floor sinks and everything. So it was tough. It was tough. We wow. did it with a couple of friends. Because that alone was going to cost us a lot. The quotes I was getting, I was like, there's no one out. I'm yeah, not really yeah, so, yeah. So yeah. Did some, a lot of it, they uh-huh. came. After every stage of it, the city had to come and inspect. Mm. Everything done the way it's supposed to be. Inspect past, next level, next level, next level. So we get to the electrical side of it. Because mm. the equipment we did, deal with, these are heavy equipment. Mm-hmm. Three phase, four, four, eight yeah, voltages. Yeah. So 220, 240, three phase, all, all kinds of stuff. So, got someone that could do it for me, like, uh, really, because that's the one part I don't want to, didn't want to mess with. I can do some of the wiring, but mm-hmm. I didn't want to mess with it. So, did that one. Then my equipment came in, installing and programming and, and commissioning this mm-hmm. equipment. Mm-hmm. Mids of COVID, travel bad. Mm-hmm. People can come from other states yep. uh, or out of the country. You know, I got a bunch of them from overseas as well. And, uh, yeah, I was stuck. So I had to go back and try to do it myself. So once we connect all of them to commission them, I literally, it was tough. A lot of reading, troubleshooting, yeah. uh, malfunctions. I did a lot of rewiring, the low voltage side of it. Um, some of these are pressure equipment. Hmm. You can't joke with those things. No, 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 no. You know, like we operate at high pressures, uh, high temperatures, mm-hmm. way more than the boiling point. Um, mm-hmm. I'm doing a lot, me a lot. I'm, sure. I have background in this not thing. Sure. So yeah. <laughs> I was, wow. I'm not scared of, you know, I you don't have to know what I'm doing first. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. I, yeah. So with, 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 with guidance over the phone or video mm-hmm. or whatever thing, tested, things started working, thing, everything just started falling into its place. Everything got all that part right, thinking that we're almost there, and then you reach out to the ESD and they tell you, you have not even started. Equipment, we don't, that's the easy part of it. Regulation, Regulation. sanitation, uh, your hazards, your. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they started listing it, listing yeah, it, and then I started going through the regulation. I was just laughing. I'm like, okay, so we are all the way here now. Are we going to back, back up? Mm-hmm. Back up? I mean, Oh, yeah, it's, not it's amazing. Like <laughs> I'm listening to you, you saw persistence. I'm seeing persistence, persistence. Yeah. Like you're like this. This gotta work. Yeah, I can't give yeah. up Look, with all because yeah. to be honest, you know where we from? Like especially the Gambians. Yeah, we don't have the zeal. <laughs> like we give up too easy. Yeah. <laughs> when things are hard, yeah, we give up too yeah. easy. You can't, you can't give up. Yeah, you, you can. can. Yeah, you, you gotta get to up. the end. Absolutely, you know. Absolutely, that's, that's, that was it. That Amazing. was that was the goal. Was the, we know we had a product, right? Good product, but nobody let first to market, mm-hmm. um, unique, mm-hmm. and if there's anywhere in this world where this product should be known mm-hmm. and 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 normalized mm-hmm. and 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 become part of a daily menu in every household, mm-hmm. it's America. Absolutely. So for me, that's it. Like, I don't care what's going to happen, but mm-hmm. we gotta go. The worst thing you can tell me that at that time is like something is impossible. I'll tell you, well, it has to work. I don't know what we're gonna do. Yeah, we started, right? So, started with that. Yeah. Just kept going until finally, You're there. the day came where it's like checked all the boxes. Oh, shut up. Oh, shut up. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I, mean, I don't want to keep it too much. <laughs> enjoying this conversation, you know, I'm yeah. learning a lot. Yeah. Oh man, and I and I know a lot of people are gonna be inspired by this. Mm-hmm. And it's not a small thing. This yeah. is big. This yeah. is really big. It's manufacturing. Yeah. As you stated, manufacturing especially food in America. Yeah. It's hard. It's, it's, it's hard. <laughs> it's really hard. So mm-hmm. okay, um I know you have so now mm-hmm. for me living in Seattle, mm-hmm. I can go to Jamma. And yeah. Shout out to Jama, and then I can go to Yus- Yusuf too. Yusuf, all the uh, Yusuf, all the African stores the use, right? much now uh, yeah. have it. Now shall I can go there and then get it? But for someone who is living out of state, maybe yeah. you don't have your the thing in your state yet. How can you get it? We have like any, literally almost any store in African store. In African do have yeah. in, in like, like uh, we have we have flyers. Okay. I, I, I have flyers. some here. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, 
We have a list. I, I'm not. I, no, we haven't published it yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. okay. kind of okay. In the website, we're gonna have it there. But you can either order online on our website. Okay. We'll ship it to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, What's the website? Jaros dot com. Jaros dot com. Right here. Yeah, Jaros. Oh, okay, okay. Right. I'll put put that on the, on the link. Yeah, yeah link. Uh, you can mm-hmm. order from Jaros dot com. We ship it to you. Uh, we ship everywhere, including Europe. Europe too. Or In Europe, pretty soon we're gonna have yeah. it on, on on Amazon over there, and yeah. that should be. Um, they should be able to buy from that and us shipping all the way. Um, the problem, shipping is expensive. It is. Our cans, it is. our goal, to be honest with you, mm-hmm. my goal is to get the cans to the customers mm-hmm. at less than $3 a can. Mm. That is our goal. Right. Across the world. It's highly achievable. We're going to do it, inshallah. Mm-hmm. The problem is the shipping. Like the now, shipping if we get especially... the shipping part of it, we can sell this can for way less than that. Mm-hmm. But, the shipping is a problem. So they, we can ship to you anyways. Mm-hmm. You know, pay for the shipping, mm-hmm. which is normal. Yeah. If you buy a lot, like if you buy 12 cans, or actually maybe let's say you buy 20 or 16 cans, even mm-hmm. on the kind of boxes we are shipping, mm-hmm. you know, it becomes almost nothing per can. Right, right. right. Uh, we, we ship, or even in New York, most of these African stores have it. Mm-hmm. A uh, couple of stores in Chicago, uh, we shipping some to Detroit pretty soon. Um, south in Texas, we're working on that. But that's the goal. Between now and next year, we get it across all the African stores, and then we're gonna hit at that point. Hopefully, you know the whole uh, chain store Chancer. thing works out, and sure. we can get it to those stores. And it's it's better for our customers because mm-hmm. we can get it to them really, really, really Very cheap. Fast. Oh, nice, nice. Probably nice. around the same, cheaper than the can. The same can you walk into the store and buy mm-hmm. Campbell's soup, which mm-hmm. is nowhere compared to what we have. Oh man, I feel the guys same price. This. You know? this is really <laughs> amazing, especially with Domoda. Yeah, man, it's, it's really it has beef, it has chicken. Yeah, it's so all your choice, man. Like, yeah. damn, I've had people that yeah. eat it like that. Mm-hmm. I've seen uh, Americans will do that. African, <laughs> no, African American. <laughs> yeah. that uh, oh, I can't remember. I think she was an African restaurant. Yeah. She ate it with noodles. Yeah. She's like, wow. it's the best. I'm like, that's the first time <laughs> in my life I heard that. <laughs> like to try yeah, stuff. I had people that would just open, yeah. cut a French bread and just yeah. put it in there. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, I like it. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, your choice, man. Um, your choice. <laughs> but but it, you can eat it. Yeah, the reason why mm-hmm. we made it this way, we mm-hmm. made it. It took a lot of testing a lot of developing the recipes to be the perfect we didn't want to make it spicy mm-hmm. we didn't want to you know it just has a little kick to it like yeah, you yeah. can make it the, the perfect thing that mm-hmm. you want it to be mm-hmm. if you want to add more spice you can add more. Um, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of mm-hmm. feedback to do a spicy option which we are exploring right, right, right. but um just for anybody to eat so, and, and eat it with anything or just eat it as because we made it consistent the consistent to the point where you microwave it for two minutes, you can eat it as is, and it's just gonna be fantastic. It's gonna be fantastic. So that's amazing. That's where we are. Amazing. But yeah, it's, it's, the challenges never end. Yeah, never but end. But you just gotta keep going. Absolutely. <laughs> we keep going, but I think there's that's the right spot to stop it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm I'm so flabbergasted. I'm so <laughs> I'm so inspired by you yeah. and I'm so proud of you as my countryman, you know, it, going yeah. all that extent to make sure, you know. We provide for our community because, like, f- making food is okay. You're gonna have your your income, or whatever, but it's that like you serve in the community. Yeah, food is important. We all eat. Yep. You know, if I need to eat the mother and I'm like, yeah, Yo, I just can go to the store and then buy it and then boom, I don't need to cook it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? There is a lot of use in yeah. our community. Yeah, at home. Yeah, for example. Home, yeah, we cook stuff. Yeah, the kids. The next thing is like, I don't want to eat. I don't want to eat it. Yeah, but they all love Domoda. Absolutely, like, <laughs> everybody loves. Domoda. You know, so yeah. I'm like, all right, just uh-huh. grab a can. can. So we have we have bunch in the in the shelf in mm-hmm. uh, the cupboard. Right. Just take a can. Your kid can help themselves. Absolutely, you don't have to go cook it for them. Or make it for them. Right. Is, it's easy. Open it. Just open, pop it, put it in the microwave. Uh, a bird put in the mm-hmm. microwave and the next thing they ready to eat. Yeah, they eat. You know, yeah. sometimes they are home, you're not there. Yeah. They help themselves. Um, at work, you know, we are working on, we have a bunch of things we are working on right now. Mm. Not rice, but um, Findi. Findi. Which is, you know, Findi, right? Findi, yeah, yeah. 
pretty soon we'll have wow. pre-cooked, ready to go, literally, just microwave it for maybe one or two minutes. And then let it go. Um, to go with the double, so we can have it as a combo. Mm. So we can have a can of tomato with two. Yeah, 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 that's nice. Just grab one, yeah. go to work, warm it up, ready to go. Ready to go. Uh, wow. Yeah, what you call it, the, a bunch of things we are, we are working on right nice, now that, nice. uh, that hopefully, yeah. Uh, but, but, but yeah, it's for everybody. Everybody, yes, from for old, old, man. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. you, you can have it as as an emergency food. Mm-hmm. The cans we design them. That's why we don't have expiration dates. It's a best buy date. Oh wow! Which it can last up to I mean five years. Mm-hmm. We can guarantee the quality is gonna be really fantastic. Mm-hmm. The meat is gonna be as good as it can be. Mm-hmm. The potatoes, the carrots. After the five years, it's still safe to eat. Mm-hmm. You're gonna. It's gonna be fine, but maybe the carrots have started being soggy, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Just quality wise, quality not, wise not yeah. safety. So sure. you can have it as an emergency food. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you know, we have power outages all the time in the fall, and sometimes you can cook. Oh. You just open a can, and the can is the way it is. You can actually, you know, go out camping. Mm-hmm. You can just yeah, yeah, yeah. have it's your cool. fire pit, just put the can, sit, mm-hmm. sit, sit there, warm it, so open it, and. Yeah, have a meal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a lot. Of thank you so, so much. Yeah. I'm so excited for, for this episode. Yeah, you know, thank it's you. an amazing episode. Thank you so much. Yeah. You know, for coming through. And then I will tell people out there: you go buy this stuff, man. Try it. Let's support yeah. our local businesses. Yeah. Let's support our own, you know, businesses. Yeah. And if you have something in mind, this brother is doing it. He has done it. He's doing it, and you can do it too. I will community we need to create wealth generational wealth and when I say wealth is generational wealth you want to pass it down to your kids yeah. you know you just don't want to be like like he stated before like back home what they used to do is just for okay we tell like I have something and then boom but I want to pass it down to my kids yeah. so whatever I've been through I've gone through they won't go through it yeah. And their kids, their kids. That's how businesses in America are here. Like yes. some of these business, big businesses we see, they be like here yeah, centuries. At, <laughs> at some point, yeah. it's it's no more thing. Yeah. It's yeah. owned by the people. The people, exactly. You know, you saw like Apple when they yeah. kicked uh, Steve Jobs out, and yep, yeah, uh, a couple of companies here actually mm-hmm. that used to be family owned. Yeah, it, it it grows beyond beyond it. So. So yeah. you're right, definitely. Mm-hmm. Like I always tell my friends, mm-hmm. if we really want to be relevant in this country, yeah. we have to own property. Absolutely. We have to own businesses. Mm. We have to participate in the, in the politics. Absolutely. Of, you know, and in, in, in all the other yep. stuff. Like, we can go back home. Mm. Are your kids gonna go home? Ah, uh, these kids are not gonna. <laughs> I mean, you can take them with you, but at some point they are adults or grown ups of their own. Yeah. They tell you, you know, it's the funny thing, a lot of you take them back home, they tell you, I wanna go home. I wanna go home. Yeah, this, I, is, this not, is home. That's so how we look at it. Home. You know, I yeah. mean, we do, we're gonna do a lot too yeah. back home, yeah. inshallah. Yeah. We're already working on yeah, things. Home too, yeah. But definitely yeah. here. We have to create the world mm-hmm. you're talking about. Mm-hmm. We have to create all it and you know, one person can do it. Uh, no, we man. have to support each other. Collectively. We had people that reach out, oh, especially at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Anybody who heard about the idea, they, they love it. They're mm-hmm. like, oh, man, this is going to be huge. Um, I want to be part of it. Invest. Invest. I'm like, I don't need investors right now. Mm-hmm. Back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I need right now is partners. Partners. I'm not going to be able to do it alone. I need somebody on the ground that's, that's going to... Work with me. Mm-hmm. And I'm just give you the money. Mm-hmm. You go work it. Give him their card, mm-hmm. and you have your thing, right? Yeah. But the partner has to be, be there with you. hands on. <laughs> so I had two mm-hmm. of my wonderful friends, mm-hmm. um, Ibrahim and Sharif, mm-hmm. um, and my little sister as well, mm-hmm. and uh, and my wife. Sure. I can't do anything without her. Man. Oh, man. She the support she gives me. Sarat <laughs> the Sarat you. The everything. Yeah. I mean, no, like it's not possible. You know? right. So you know, they, these are the partners I have that really are there supporting in every aspect. But mm. as we are growing right now, obviously, I will we'll bring in investors and all of that. Absolutely. Stuff. But sure. definitely, nobody can do it alone. Mm-mm. It has to be the community. Mm. It has to be the people. Everybody has to support. Oh, I mean, we have to, you know. If you can be an investor, you mm-hmm. can be you know, a partner, mm-hmm. like promote, help. Even passing down a flyer. You know. Absolutely. You know. We got yeah. to. This is our own. You know. It's our own. To help reach yeah. every 
you know, we go to, I used to go to work and they ask us, I've never had Gambian food. Mm. Like, what does it taste like? Yeah. And stuff like that. You don't have to explain anything. No. Just get a can and say, this is something. <laughs> Try this. Go home, check it out. Try and, this. And let me know what you think. Absolutely. Oh, um, man. The yeah. next day, <laughs> they were to you. Yeah. 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 So, so, like you said, we have to create the world mm -hmm. and we have to support everybody. No, no, we have, have to. to. We have, have to. We are growing here. It's a growing community. Yeah. You know, like you said, like, if, come on now, America, it's a land of opportunity. That's yeah. just a fact. Yeah. So, but we have to grab that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And we can't do it alone. Like you say, we have to do it collectively. Yeah. Support each other. And then dream big, man. Hey, <laughs> oh man, it's too much, man. It's too much. Like, it's a lot we, to talk about. Yeah, yeah. you gonna, you gonna, you gonna bring it on, brother. <laughs> you, you gonna be a, like a regular, regular. Like, sure just, yeah. And when yeah. we have the time, if the you know, and it's okay with you, one day we're gonna come to the yeah. camp. Yeah, anytime. And then you know, yeah, show anytime. the people what you got. Anytime. Yeah. Thank you so much yeah. for this, man. Thank I you, appreciate house. it, bro. Thank you, bro. Thank appreciate you, man. it, man. Yeah, man. For sure, man. <laughs> hey, share this video, man, and let's keep the conversation going. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Yeah, no. <laughs>